Okay, in this video, we're going to learn how to make a massing model in Revit. The massing model is used to explain your building in conjunction with its site. So a lot of times our site involves uh, other buildings around it that might cast shadows. We might cast shadows on them. So it's a really good thing to do to help communicate clearly how the buildings can impact the surrounding site and vice versa, how that surrounding site is going to impact our building. It can be done pretty quickly in Revit. There's not a lot of detail usually put in the massing model. So we're basically making the shell of the building, kind of giving it an appearance. Um, some of the cosmetic things are really unnecessary, but um, they're simple to do. So we're going to do them. This is kind of our end goal here. I'm going to actually take this and delete it out of the model. Uh, so it doesn't get in our way. I could hide it, but then sometimes it interferes with other views in our plan. So I'm going to jump over to level one and we're going to basically make our, uh, our mass starting level one here. And then I'm going to jump over to 3D. So we're going to go to the tab that says massing in sight. And we're going to do an in place mass. When we click on that, we can name it. It doesn't really matter what we name it. I'm going to then go up to the draw panel. I'm going to create a couple simple pieces of geometry that you might have gathered from surrounding, uh, you know, the surrounding site. Let's say Google Maps, you could figure out roughly how big, you know, a surrounding building is. So I can type that in as I go, or I can edit it after the fact. I'm going to elect to edit it after. So I'm just going to kind of create the geometry of this building that's going to be taking place on my site. Um, when I click on the geometry, then afterwards I can do active dimensions, click on that again, and then I can change the dimensions. So I like, I'm happy with 30, and then here I'm going to choose 20 feet. And then for this circle, I'm just going to bump it over slightly. And I'm going to change that to 10. And I'm just going to bump that over a little bit. You didn't know you can use the arrow keys to nudge. It's good to do if you don't have to be completely accurate. Now this is where we're going to jump over into 3D mode. I'm going to click on this uh, rectangle that I made. I'm going to go to create form and do solid form. And with this, I can then manipulate the height. I'm going to choose 30 feet and hit enter. For this one here, I kind of like the idea of creating this to be, I have two options, a sphere or a cylinder. I'm going to check cylinder. And then I'm going to make this at 15 feet, almost like there could be a walkout patio or deck on top of this. And once I have that done, I'm going to choose finish mass. Now over here in my floor plans, I'm going to add a floor plan. And I'm going to have to do that with my elevation here. Whoops. Adding a floor plan view by creating a level. And the reason I want to do this now is because when I do my levels with the mass, I can actually put them on each floor that I currently have a level. It's easier to do this first. So if I jump back over to 3D, when I click on my mass here, I can do mass floors. And this is going to create a floor at each level that I check. So if I say OK, you'll now see that I have my three floors. Notice that it did not create a floor above this cylinder because it's not at that level. OK, now with those floors in place, I'm going to go back to the Massing Insight tab and let's go to Roof. With the Roof, we can create an offset just like normal. So I'm going to do a one foot offset on this roof. I'm just going to click on the two surfaces that I want my roof to be created on and say create roof. And then now our roof is created. I now want to create a couple walls. So I'm going to do wall by face. Once again, from the massing and site tab, I'm paying attention to my type selector and I'm going to choose a wall that I would like. So I'm going to just choose a generic eight inch wall. I'm going to do that on the sides and the back. And then I'll also do it on the front of the structure as well. And this curve part I'm going to keep as a curtain wall system. So I'm going to go back to massing and site. I'm going to do curtain system. And I've already done edit type and I've done duplicate. I've renamed it to five foot by five foot. And then I edited the spacing five foot and five foot. I'm going to then click 
on both sides of this cylinder and hit create system and then I have my curtain wall grid. With that in place, I'm going to then add a couple of curtain wall windows in here. Um, so what I'm going to do now is go back to level one. And what I want to do is go to the normal architecture tab. I'm going to do a wall command and I'm going to go down and I'm going to choose curtain wall exterior glazing. I'm going to edit the type of that and make sure automatically embed is checked. When that's checked, I'm going to then make my base offset three foot high. I'm going to have that only go up five feet from there. So essentially like the window I'm creating inside this wall is five foot high. And I'm just going to click and make that through. I'm going to then hit escape. I can do the same thing and make them at level two and three. I just won't be able to see them right now. But I could do that from this view if I so choose just to reference the geometry that I already have. And then I'm going to hit escape once and I'm going to click on this and do level three. And I'm going to do the same thing from here. Oop. Zoom in to here, hit escape twice, go to our 3D view, and then now I can see where I'm at. Okay. So I have basically my mask created. I did this all fairly quickly and it can add a lot of detail to your site plan uh, in Revit. It's just a great way to, uh, to analyze sun, wind, whatever analysis programs you have, it just really helps. Even with aesthetics, it can really help show how much your building um, blends into its surroundings. Make sure you save and subscribe. Thank you.